Is it better to speak or to die? Chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. You have shown unflinching bravery and... How proficient are you right now, wielding that sword on your back? Yes, I understand. I'm trying to be a bit more empathetic. Benefit of the doubt, you know? Is it better to speak or to die? This is the question that seems to plague every Link in every Legend of Zelda game. So why are we only talking about Breath of the Wild Link then? What makes him special? In the Zelda games prior to Breath of the Wild, Link was silent as a way to help the player put their own personality and opinions onto the character. Link might have had a grandmother or a childhood best friend, but these were easily relatable types. This helped with immersion. It allowed the player to easily impress themselves onto the character, despite an obvious lack of character customization. He stays silent not only as a way to help the player impress themselves onto the character, but also as a central aspect to who he is, or rather was, before the Calamity. Understanding his silence is important to understanding the way he approaches things in the memories of Breath of the Wild, and yet, you still have to specifically go out and look for the answer to the question, why is Link so quiet? And so, Link seemed, prior to any events we even witness in the game, to ask himself the question, is it better to speak or to die? He would, of course, eventually do both. <laughs> the Heptameron is a collection of 72 short stories written in French by Magalite de Naval. Today, we will be discussing a portion of Story 10. In this story, the passionate advances of Amador, the male lead, to the female lead, Florida, are described. Unfortunately, as with most stories in the Heptamal, it's filled with unsavory details, such as the fact that these advances took place somewhat non-consensually while Florida was already married. Oops. This made the relationship between the two main characters strained and honestly kind of deplorable. And so, why would I even suggest discussing Heptamelon Story 10, such a horrible tale, in relation to the somber yet comparatively nice story of Breath of the Wild with its supposedly innocent love? Well, simply put, uh, I'm, I'm not. There is one part of Story 10 worth discussing because the rest is, well, uh, interesting. Regardless, discuss we shall. I pray you, sweetheart, counsel me whether it is better for a man to speak or die. Florida forthwith replied, I shall always counsel my friends to speak and not to die. There are few words that cannot be mended, but life once lost can never be regained. Is it better for a man to speak or to die? Link could have asked himself or Zelda, just as Amador did. And it's not unlikely that in Link's mind those were the options. Zelda's diary in Breath of the Wild states that, bit by bit, I've gotten Link to open up to me. It turns out he's quite a glutton. I can't resist a delicious meal. When I finally got around to asking why he's so quiet all the time, I could tell it was difficult for him to say, but he did. With so much at stake, so many eyes upon him, he feels it necessary to stay strong, to silently bear any burden. A feeling I know all too well. For him, it has caused him to stop outwardly expressing his thoughts and feelings. I have always believed him to be a gifted person who has never faced a day of hardship. How wrong I was. Everyone has struggles that go unseen by the world. I was so absorbed by my own problems, I failed to see his. I wish to talk to him more and to see what lies beneath those calm waters, to hear him speak freely and openly. And perhaps I, too, will be able to bear my soul to him and share these demons that have plagued me all these years. Not only does this suggest that Link has, in memories or manners we never got to see, spoken to or otherwise communicated with Zelda, 
but it also alerts us as to why he rarely speaks. Duty. Duty and service. It is very likely that pondering the question, to speak or to die, was very literal to Link. If he spoke, he focused on himself. His duty went by the wayside. If he stayed silent, he didn't exist. He had to exist as a separate entity from his duty. Had he foregone his duty, that would have also ultimately ended up in his death, as Hyrule succumbed to the force that was Calamity Ganon. Perhaps he felt that this way there was at least a chance. Of course, the truth is indeed much sadder, as he did eventually speak to Zelda. He spoke, and he still died. Even worse is that by speaking, by forming a relationship with Zelda that he hadn't had previous as evident in the memories and also in Zelda's clear change in the way she speaks of him, the two form some sort of a relationship, even if it's just a friendship, and that would have made it so much worse for Zelda. Even worse is that by speaking, by forming the relationship with Zelda that he did, he changed his own mindset and he may have started protecting his princess, overprotecting his kingdom ultimately leading to the century of horror Hyrule experienced, as well as the grief Zelda was dealt to bear. To Link, to speak truly was to die. This understanding, the consequences of Link's actions, is made all the more worse when that line in the Heptameron is followed up with, I have hitherto been unwilling to tell you of the great affection that I feel for you. First, I wish to prove it to you by long service, and secondly, I feared that you might deem it presumption in me, who am but a simple gentleman, to address myself to one upon whom it is not fitting that I should look. And even though I were of royal station like your own, your heart, in its loyalty, would suffer none save the son of the Infante of Fortune, who has won it to speak to you of love. Of course, Link would have been engaged in long service to Princess Zelda, though likely never would have been seen as anything more than the help to the king. This mindset, of course, trickled down to the princess as well, until eventually she became wanting to be more open with him. In Story 10, Amador was of royal birth, and in a way, so is Link in that the Triforce is a complex of gods and really there's nothing about, above gods, but I digress. Even still, the words that Amador says to Florida imply that she is so much more untouchable than him. And that would have been true for Link as well. And that's what she was, wasn't she? Untouchable? Universally beloved? The power over light within her, raising her above even her father as the king, giving her the strength of the royal family that not many could bear. In our text, Amador continues. But, just as in a great war necessity compels men to devastate their own possessions and to destroy their corn in the blade, that the enemy must derive no profit therefrom, so do I risk anticipating the fruit which I had hoped to gather in season, lest your enemies and mine prove by it to your detriment. And though used as a metaphor here, in many ways in our case it is not. They are already in a great war, preparing to fight the beast of 10,000 years legend. The last part can be confusing, but by saying, I risk anticipating the fruit which I had hoped to gather in season, lest your enemies and mine profit by it to your detriment. I believe this is a direct reference to the danger of loving. Again, it's used wholly as a metaphor, but what if it's not? If Link and Zelda were to have gotten together before Link fell, would that have not made the whole situation worse? Would Calamity Ganon not have benefited from the detriment of Zelda, who would have been beside herself by the death of Link so much more than she already was? There is both the notion that if they did not get together right then, that there might never be another chance, but also the understanding that they did get together, it might make things all the more worse. Amador and Florida go back and forth for a long while until Amador eventually says, If, for your honor's sake, or for aught concerning you, you ever have a need of a gentleman's life, I will gladly place mine at your disposal. You may be sure also that whatever I may do is honorable and virtuous and will solely be for love of you. He lays his life at her feet. His ultimate act of love 
when he knows that Florida is both already married and not entirely interested, is to lay his life at her feet out of love, to give his life away to her. Is that not what Link does every day? Is that love, that devotion, not what ultimately answered the question of whether it is better to speak or to die? Amador and Florida's relationship can be described as strained at best. It's rocky with marriage and politics and infidelity and this and that and many bad things. It's, it's not a good story, actually. Link and Zelda were quite a bit more fortunate. The world was against him, but they, at least, were not against one another. Their hearts were seemingly open to one another. If, of course, you ignore Mifa, which there's, like, evidence to suggest Link might have not really been emotionally invested in her anyways. Ooh. Instead, all that's left is the fear of what might happen if they were to give in to their desires. So, does this answer the question of whether Zelink is canon in Breath of the Wild? No, of course not. This is merely one example of the way their lives might have looked prior to the Calamity, of the questions they would have had to ask themselves. And so, is it better to speak or to die? Well, in the wise words of Florida, I shall always counsel my friends to speak and not die. There are few words that cannot be mended, but life once lost can never be regained. Link was silent as ever in every memory we saw him in, and yet he still died. Not forever, of course, but he still did. He probably never learned the truth of Florida's words. To him, to speak is to die, no? What do you think? Are there other random texts written by dead people who seem to perfectly describe Zellink for absolutely no reason? Anyways, subscribe. Or don't, I guess. I don't know your life. Seriously though, this guy died almost 500 years ago. How did he get this so right? You simply cannot write a more pure, raw line for Zellink than, I pray you, sweetheart, counsel me whether it is better for a man to speak or die. My fanfiction for Zellink will simply never hit that peak.